Today, God is saying to you, don't be concerned about anything. Instead, pray about everything and put your trust in me. You always state that your support comes from the creator of heaven and earth, and you believe it. You even know that I will never let those who believe in me down. So, why are you still concerned about some issues? You are aware of what occurred in Elijah's life. When the drought struck, I supplied Elijah with all he required. I had given him water to drink and told the ravens to feed him. Similarly, I understand your requirements better than anyone else. I will get it to you as soon as possible. Believe in me. A delay is not the same as a denial. Delays may occur for a variety of reasons. You are aware of what occurred in Daniel's life. When Daniel prayed, the answer came instantaneously, but it took time for him to receive it due to the demonic influence. But he continued to pray, and as a result of his prayers, the evil force's obstruction was broken, and he received his answer to his petition. You are aware of what occurred in Lazarus' life. I can heal him, but I put it off because I wanted to turn the impossible into the biggest miracle conceivable. They trusted me and expected me to heal him, but I wanted to give them more than they imagined. You may be experiencing some delays in your life. Some delays may be caused by demonic forces that can only be conquered through prayer. Some may be because you believed and expected me to do what you thought you needed, but I want to give you more than you asked for by performing the greatest miracle. Some delays may occur because you are unprepared for what you are expecting or asking me in prayer. So, if I give it to you right away, you might lose it. I don't want it to happen, therefore I'll prepare you so that you never lose it in your life. So, let me tell you, there is a cause for every delay. As a result, never stop praying. Maintain your faith in me. Nothing can be changed by stress. Instead of stressing, start thinking that your circumstances will improve. When you look at Daniel's life, you will notice that when he was thrown into the lion's den, he did not worry or stress about his position, but instead began to pray and believe that I would protect him. When you look at Joseph's life, you'll notice that he was blamed and punished for things he didn't do. He was condemned to prison, which could cause him a lot of problems. Even though he was in that circumstance, he did not worry or fret about it. Instead, he began to pray and believed in me. When Elijah noticed the Cherith brook progressively drying up, he began to pray about it and believe that I would provide what he required. When you examine the lives of Esther, Moses, and David, you will notice that they all had situations that caused them to be concerned or stressed. Instead of worrying or stressing about the situation, they all began to pray about it and believed in me. I have blessed them and made them the blessing through their faith, and I have bestowed many blessings on them that they never expected. You may be going through a scenario in your life that is causing you to be stressed or concerned about certain things. Instead of fretting or stressing about it, start praying about it and believing in me. The circumstance may persist for a long time, but if you maintain your faith and pray about it, I will give you the greatest testimony that no one could have predicted would happen in your life. You already know I have a strategy for everything. A strategy to succeed and bless you. So, instead of fretting or stressing about the circumstance, begin praying about it and strengthen your faith in me. Today, 
God is saying to you, I just want you to know how much I adore you. Nothing can keep you apart from me. I am always available to you. You can rely on me. I will never let you down. I will shower you with blessings. I will make you prosperous. I will direct you. I will always defend you. You know you'll see me face to face one day. I am so looking forward to that day. Everything happens for a reason. Instead of worrying about them, pray about them and thank me for the good that will come from them. Look at the birds of the air, they don't sow, reap, or store in barns, yet I feed them. Take a look at how the wildflowers grow. They don't work hard to make their garments, but I make sure they have everything they need. Don't you believe you're more valuable than them if I can provide them with all they require? I will supply what you require, not what you believe you require, but what you require. Before you wonder how there would be a way when there appears to be none, remember that I had already planned how to provide you the way a long time ago. The Israelites were afraid as they approached the Red Sea. Mountains were on one side and the Red Sea was in front of them. They began to complain about me, saying they would rather be slaves again than die in the desert. But they had no idea that the one who had led them out of Egypt had a plan long before they arrived at the Red Sea. When a fierce storm sprang up on the lake, the waves began to rush over the boat. When the disciples witnessed the storm, even though they knew who was with them, they lost faith and began to worry. In the same way, even when you know I am with you and walk steadfastly in trust, there will be storms in your life to distract you or make you anxious or doubtful about matters over which I already have control. Don't lose sight of me at that point. Keep your faith in me. Because the storms will pass, but I shall be with you forever. I shall be loyal. I will always keep you dear to my heart. I will continue to guide you. I will continue to defend you. I will keep blessing you. I shall stick to what I stated or promised because nothing is impossible for me. Keep this in mind at all times. Your faith in me is important, as is what you always require. Let me assure you that it is impossible to please me without faith. Remember that your modest confidence in me can change everything. I can give you the miracle because of your confidence in me by surprising those who thought the miracle would never happen in your life. You are aware of the miracle that occurred in the lives of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They believed in me after being put into the hot furnace. They expected me to arrive and save them. I rescued them because of their confidence in me and I performed the greatest miracle by saving them in front of others who thought they would die. After that, I blessed them, and through their lives, all other people learned about me and worshipped and praised me. In the same way, if you have confidence in me during your circumstance, I can still perform a miracle in your life by surprising those who thought you would never emerge out of it. I will also make you a blessing for them through that miracle. And then they will realize I am still the living God, as well as that I can do anything and that nothing is impossible for me if they believe in me. All you need is faith in me for all of this. Even if you believe you will, you will not receive some things. But that doesn't mean your trust in me is pointless. But it also means that because of your faith, I will give you many greater things than you deserve. 
When the sisters of Lazarus sent a word to my son about their brother's illness, they thought that I could heal him. But I didn't let my son go there when he got the message. Because I had planned to accomplish more than what they expected of me. Even after Lazarus died, Martha thought that I would continue to give them whatever they asked. They expected me to heal him, but instead, I raised him from the grave. Just because you made a mistake doesn't imply I can't forgive you if you recognize, repent, and seek my forgiveness. If you believe I cannot forgive, you are mistaken. You may recall that I asked Jonah to go to Nineveh, but he instead went to Tarshish. He disobeyed me and made an error. But, for him to understand his error, repent, and call out to me, I arranged a circumstance to bring him back to where I wanted him to be. Despite the circumstances, I created him as a blessing for the people of Nineveh. Similarly, certain things will occur in your life to cause you to realize your error and repent, as well as to reach out to me, have faith in me, and return to the blessing. Do you realize how easily you become sidetracked from my goals, even when you hold me close? Jonah was a prophet, he knew about me, and he even prayed to me. But he disobeyed and left me because of a concept that entered his mind. Similarly, just because you have a thought does not always imply that it came from me. I have given you the wisdom and understanding to make the proper decisions. You already know who I am and what kind of thoughts I will have. So, think again before making a decision. Before making a decision, pray to me about it. I did exactly what I told to Abraham. I did what I said concerning my son. That is, if I say something, I will say it at the appropriate time. That is, if I say I will send my son back, I will do so. Make certain that you are ready for it. If you don't know how to prepare, Ask me and I will show you how and prepare you for the glorious day ahead. Today, God is saying to you, Everything serves a function. Everything that happens in your life serves a reason. Do you know that when Peter and his pals were fishing all night, I could have given them a great number of fish. But I did not do so. Because I had a strategy for them. I had a plan for their lives. So, don't be concerned about what has happened or is happening in your life, or about what you have lost or have not received. Because I have a plan for you and a reason for your existence. I will make it happen when the time comes. Believe in me. They all assumed my son's death on the cross was the end of him. But they had no idea there would be a resurrection, nor did they realize that was only the beginning of some things. It is apparent from this that I, who began a good task, will faithfully complete it. I sent him for a reason, and I succeeded. Similarly, if I started anything in your life, I am still committed to seeing it through. Believe me. Where you assume the end is going to be the start of some unprecedented blessing. Today, God is saying to you, When it appears to be the end, remember that the best is yet to come. When the Israelites arrived in front of the Red Sea, they assumed it was the end of the world, but it didn't turn out that way. When Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, Everyone assumed it was the end, but it did not turn out that way. When Joseph's brothers sold him, they assumed it was the end of the story, but it didn't turn out that way. You may feel stuck in some areas of your life. 
It could be your situation, a decision to be made, or your waiting, and you may feel as though there is no way forward. Consider what I had done for the Israelites, Daniel, and Joseph at this time. The Israelites thought there would be no way, but I carved a path through the Red Sea. Consider Daniel and Joseph in the same way. If I was able to provide the best for the Israelites, as well as Daniel and Joseph, do you think there is anything I can't do in your life? You could argue that I am not Daniel or Joseph. I'm aware of it as well. But you should know that you are my child, and I want you to know that I, too, have a purpose for you. A strategy for giving you the best and prospering you.